Okay, so DNA nanomaterials are basically materials like molecules and mm -hmm. structures that are made of DNA. And um, y you might want to think of DNA like a Lego building block. I, okay. I mean, it really is like that. So we use it, basically, we take it out of the biological context. We know that DNA is the molecule that uh, our body uses to store information, to transmit information, right? right. Uh, but, uh, you know, kind of found out or discovered that we can actually take it and make it in our laboratories and use it to make structures, to make, uh, uh, you know, cages and tubes and all sorts of uh, different structures uh, yeah. that you can do with them. You so that's what a DNA nanomaterial is. Now we have these machines, and these machines are called DNA synthesizers. And what all you do is you basically put the building blocks, like the little bases, if you want, of DNA sure. uh, in bottles, mm -hmm. and then you program the sequence of the DNA that you want, and then this thing just makes them for you. And you know, in, in a few hours, you just get your DNA, and and then you can modify it, you can change it, and so it, you know, you use it like a molecule, basically. Right. Yeah. So you almost have a three D printer for DNA. That's right. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. It's fantastic. Yeah. What I mean by that is is that you can really program it. You you know, you have uh, basically on the DNA a sequence like A, T, G, C, basically, and yeah. how they're organized. Once you know that sequence, you know <clears throat> exactly what it's going to do. And so then you can actually make it into different shapes and different structures for different applications. It's almost like an algorithm. It's almost like uh, a computer program uh, building structures then using DNA. And yeah. so drug delivery is central to personalized medicine, mm -hmm. is we modify the DNA chemically. We change it. We change the structure a little bit. So it looks a bit like DNA, but it doesn't act like DNA in the body. Creating materials that, that have uh, optical properties, like that have light properties or electrical properties that are very interesting. We want to understand how to make these because they're not you know, simple to make, right? How do you convince a DNA strand to actually kind of come together and fold and make it a cube? And the mm -hmm. DNA strands know exactly what to do without you doing anything. You can um, uh, go to your garage and order from uh, f uh, from a company, and very cheaply actually, yeah. uh, four DNA strands. Just tell them to make them. They'll send them to you. Put them in a little water thing, heat them, cool them, and out you get your DNA cube. This is how easy it is with DNA. It gets me excited because it is so programmable. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, uh, there's many other molecules. I mean, we have an infinite number of molecules in the laboratory. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I guess it's, it's hard for a chemist to convince other people that other molecules are not as smart as DNA, but just to but just to think about the fact that, uh, you know, we have billions of years of evolution that have made this molecule right. the way it is and how selective it is. And, right. um, and so we're just taking advantage of that. But it is quite special, this molecule. It's just and and the fact that you can actually take it completely out of biology and just use it like a Lego uh, building block is also just fascinating because now you can control materials yeah. so well. I mean, there's people now in my field who are trying to actually make uh, 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 electronic devices using using this. So rather than a computer chip made of, you know, uh, semiconductor sure. stuff, you know, you make it, have it make itself essentially, not right. fabricate it. Just, you know, put the molecules together and they make themselves into this circuit. Right.